I just care about everybody and I love everybody and I love humanity and animals. Yes, he is a sweary maggot. The sheets, the learn, how are those? That was terrible. I shouldn't have had this sparring this last night. Hello, I'm James Bain. Today we are playing Who's Most Likely To? Round three or the Grand Tour. Hi, I'm Jeremy Clarkson and uh, this is the third round of Who's Most Likely To? With the Grand Tour. Hello, I'm Richard Hammond, and this is Who's Most Likely Round 3 for It's Gone Viral. But who is most likely to live the longest? Well, Richard Hammond is the youngest, but he likes trying to kill himself, so that he's got a bit of a joker. Uh, I, think, I think if you apply the rule of sod, it would be Jeremy, because he probably least deserves to, so he's the one who will. Well, obviously, there's every chance I might interrupt the process by dying in a massive crash. Um, <laughs> James, uh, I mean, he moves quite slowly, so we're conserving energy. Jeremy, uh, I'm, I'm not saying he's on a health kick, but he's been the cigarettes. Um, Live the longest. I suppose possibly Clarkson, annoyingly, because he stubbornly, you know, he had pneumonia and he didn't die. And there's more of him. So he could sort of keep using up material and wearing himself out. And there'd still be enough left to make up a normal sized human being. So, <laughs> class. Uh, probably Hammond, because he's the fittest and the youngest. Well, no, you mean live to the highest age or live longer than... I mean, Richard Hammond's already got 10 years on us, because, you know, I'm 61, May's pushing 60, you know, it was very nearly there. And, um, I know he looks older. He claims he's buff now, as he told you. Oh, James May, that's because in lockdown, he, he just started cycling everywhere. It's not like he's short of cars, but anyway, he started cycling everywhere, getting in everyone else's way. And um, and now he actually said to me the other day, I'm, I'm, I think I'm rather buff. Just like, you're literally the least buff person I've ever seen in my life. Um, now he's convinced he's not going to last very long. I'm not, I probably won't. That'd be Hammond. You got Hammond for donkey's years, yes, I should imagine. And he's quite fit. He runs around everywhere. Well, he did before his latest accident. Well, Hammond said it was you. What me? Oh, well, yeah. no, I haven't. It's because he's probably thinks because I'm made of rock and iron, which I sort of am. If I like, because my dad died at sixty-one. A lot of my friends died when they were sixty-one. Um, my oldest, my closest friend died at 61. So, and I am now 61. So if I can get past 61, then I'll probably last until I'm 173. Oh. But yeah, I've got the next, I've got the next 10 months to get through. <laughs> it'll be a lot of grand tours if you live to 173. <laughs> you what? There'll be a lot of grand tours if you live to 173. <laughs> Yeah, no, that would be, I think they'd be, well, it'd just be testing in Conti panties by, you know, the time I'm 107. <laughs> Fast as Zimmer for Oh, no, I've gone and wet the sheets. The learn, how are those? That was terrible. I shouldn't have had this asparagus last night. So next one is who is most likely to sleep talk? In our first ever episode that we did of this, um, you said that Clarkson has a kind of Tourette swearing, muttering thing when he sleeps, and yeah. you called him a blasphemous macker. And then he does this sort of Tourette swearing and muttering thing, so it's like being in a tent with a blasphemous maggot. <laughs> it's really unpleasant. If I think that I'd have to stand by that. I mean, I've never slept in the same room or tent as Hammond. Um, I know he can snore a bit, but. The only person, the only person I've, uh, out of those two, I've only ever shared with Clarkson, and only one tree, which is when we were in tents in the North Pole. And yes, he is a sweary maggot. He does mutter strange things, either in his sleep or without realizing he's doing it. So it, the answer still has to be Clarkson. That comes up a lot. Does Hammond not actually like sharing things? Because it seems to be you and Clarkson sharing things together and Hammond's just always on his own. Uh, well, in the North Pole trip, this is a long time ago now, but Hammond was with the dog, so he was... So me, me and Jeremy had to be together in the car, really. Um, where else has it happened? I don't think Hammond is particularly... I mean, we're all pretty adverse to sharing things with each other. Food, <laughs> bedrooms, you know, ho hotels, <laughs> cars. Um, 
No, but there's no, there's no deliberate policy of leaving Richard Hammond out. But it's a good idea now you've mentioned it. In the first round of this that we ever did, James did mention that you, as to quote James, he said, you um, kind of have a Tourette's-like swearing when you're asleep. I do when I'm in a tent with him in the North Pole, which is when it happened. And I'm surprised, frankly, you could hear above the sound of his sinuses, which sound like the tectonic plates of the San Andreas Fault are shifting and then being amplified through the Grateful Dead sound system. He is one noisy snorer. When we were in Madagascar, he was four tents along from me and I had to, in the middle of the night, get up disassemble my tent and then re-erect it half a mile away to have any chance of sleeping. And all anyone talked about in the morning was who was in that tent. Was, well, I think I'm not, I'm not quite sure. No, he's uh, death defined. But I don't know about Richard Hammond. I'm, I'm delighted to say I've never shared a tent with him. Uh, James or Jeremy always moans about Jeremy's... No, Jeremy always moans about James's snoring. When we have to be in tents. I think he called him a snorry maggot. No, that was James called Jeremy that. But I don't know who sleep talks. I'm going to plead ignorance on that one. I'll have to come down on... I, OK, let's say it would be Jeremy because he'll, he'll, he'll dream an opinion and just feel the need to impose it on the world. So it's going to be Jeremy. Who's most likely to end up in hospital while shooting? Richard Hammond. <laughs> By a country mile. I mean, touch wood. That is Richard Hammond. Yeah, we um that was the first question we asked Hammond, and I didn't even think about what a stupid question it is. It is. It, it's it, yes, that's like it, it's it's just yes. I mean, he always ends up in hospital. He's never ever taken a pair of his own trousers off. They're always cut off by a paramedic. <laughs> he always goes home with as a in an air ambulance. There's no need to ever book him a taxi back home because he's not going to need it. Well, it has to be Richard Hammond based on precedent, um, history, followed by, well, I, I only have to say who's most likely. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be, it's either Richard Hammond because he has an accident or Jeremy Clarkson because he disintegrates. I think these days it's least likely to be me, which is a bit of a turn up. Yeah, because back in the day, like um, a while back, you had that awful incident when you got knocked out by the, um, the tow bar. Yes, and I fell off the horse as well. Yeah. And I, I, I went through a spate of having a few of those sort of crap school boy accidents, but I haven't had one of those for a long time. Um, and I'm actually much healthier now than I was a few years ago. So there, there's no threat of, as far as I can make out, you know, stroke, heart attack, anything like that. I don't generally crash things like Hammond does. And I live much more healthily than Clarkson. So I think it would go Hammond, then Clarkson, then me. Yeah. I'm the least burdensome on the health service, which is important in these times. It is indeed. We've heard all about um, how you think you're macho now from Clarkson. <laughs> said, yes, you've been going on cycling rides and stuff. So I never said macho, I said buff. I'm oh, buff. 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 Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, that was probably just Clarkson fantasizing about me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, come on, you can't ask that, because there is evidence to suggest that the three of us, one most likely to end up in hospital while shooting, is the one who always does end up in hospital while shooting. I'm going to try and make a case for it not being me. Um, OK, I could make... How long have I got? Just I can quickly make a couple of cases. Go for it. Because James is like 160 years old, quite fragile, a bit snap off him very easily. If he fell over a step, or sat down too hard. I think that little old frame could be hurt, so it could be him. Jeremy, you probably aren't familiar with this. It's a little known thing, but he can be quite rude and <laughs> can upset people. So there's every chance he might upset somebody carrying an ax and he could end up in hospital as well. Obviously, if there's a car involved in any way, it'll be me. <laughs> and given that we do a show about cars, it's going to be me. <laughs> yeah. Who is most likely to be the most emotional? Oh, I think Hammond and me, James has the emotional heart of a stone. Not even that. Um, 
No, he's, he's not really capable of expressing a, an emotion, James, but Hammond and I are both fairly emotional sausages when, uh, when needs must. Do you reckon you're like the most caring in terms of like, because you're more emotional? No, I think, I think Hammond is also quite caring. I think, um, yeah, he's a, he's a softy, he's Hammond, underneath the soft and midgety exterior. Um, by emotional, do you mean <coughs> histrionic? Or yeah. do you mean deeply moved? I mean, that's quite a wide spectrum. <laughs> Je Jeremy is the most likely to be histrionic, yes. He's, he's, he's the most dramatic. That's I it. think more like, you know, kind of in a caring way, like the... Oh, oh, me, definitely. I just care about everybody and I love everybody and I love humanity and animals. That goes against what the other boys said, I won't lie. <laughs> yeah, I know it does. <laughs> wrong, man. Your emotional capacity has been compared to a stone from the uh, um, That was Jeremy, wasn't it? He's been saying that for about 15 years. Yeah. <laughs> because a lot of my finer feelings, I keep them to myself because that's where they belong, or I share them with people who are important to me. I like that. Rules Jeremy out. <laughs> Uh, not James. He he had his emotions removed when he was, I think, about seven. Uh, Jeremy Clarkson is quite. He can be quite an emotional thing. So can I. Uh, I'm going to say I'm going to say Clarkson on that one. I'm going to say yeah, probably mate. Yeah, he's he's a big old. Yeah. He's yeah, he's, he's quite fun. emotional in Clarkson's farm. It's yeah. we're seeing a different side to him. Yeah. It's revolting, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, who's most likely to be the best liar? Oh, I'm pretty good lying. I am extremely good at lying. Well, that could be a lie. And you never know, because I'm so good at it. Um, I don't think James can lie. I think he knows what it is. Um, I don't know, probably me, I would say. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm pretty good at it. Because I just make stuff up. If I don't really know it, I just make it up and it just sounds convincing. You know, 4,000 people a day, a day are killed by speed humps. <laughs> dangerous thing, really dangerous. 87% <laughs> of people genuinely believe lockdown should end now. Just all of it, end it now, 87%. These are all lies, but I'm just, you know, showing you what I mean. <laughs> I believe you, you'd be a great politician. <laughs> Jeremy, I think. I have great difficulty with lying, so. I don't know about Hammond, that, that one might be too difficult. I don't think it's me. I'm not very good at lying, and I would give it away if I did. <laughs> Do you like laugh or something when you lie? Or yes, or I say, but I'm lying at the end. <laughs> well, yeah, that would give it away. <laughs> <laughs> On the flip side of that, who's most likely to die doing something stupid? It's it's me or Hammond. Uh, I mean, again, precedent would say Hammond, although he does have a remarkable ability to survive doing things that are stupid. I think there's probably quite a good case for me. Um, and when, when you say doing something stupid, it would be something quite innocently stupid, like riding my bicycle or buying my little aeroplane that I've got. You know, I'll make a cock up in a moment of daydreaminess and that'll be that. I think I'm gonna vote for me on that. Well, hopefully not. <laughs> hopefully that won't happen. <laughs> no, I hope it doesn't, but as long as it's quick and clean. You know. What did the others say? I bet they said Hammond, didn't they? Um, I think Hammond ruled himself, yeah. No, any of the three of us. I mean, that, 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 that really could be any of us. Um, because we all do stupid things that occasionally bring with them a great risk of death. So, uh, is accident related, so it always comes down to me. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, I'm going to say it's me, Asti, because probably I ride motorcycles and do stupid stuff, so probably me. Who's most likely to move to America? Oh, uh, 
Well, I'm always accused of being the token American, um, but uh, let's see, I, I, probably me, I suppose. It probably would be, I think, I don't know. That's a difficult question to answer that. I don't think it would be James. Actually, you see, it probably would, because James doesn't, I mean, he's not really a countryside bloke in the UK. He doesn't like, the sort of oldy worldy stuff. He doesn't like antiques, he doesn't like old cars, he doesn't like old motorcycles, he doesn't like old buildings. So he wouldn't miss all the oldy worldy stuff. So actually, although he won't feel it's that way, it's James. I'm saying. Interesting. I would have I would have definitely said you. I think No, I mean I live in a six hundred year old house in the country and collect old British sports cars. That <laughs> wouldn't really work in America, would it? So I'm gonna go that way, I think. <laughs> I'm thinking about this series probably more seriously than you want me to. I think it's probably Richard Hammond, not because he secretly desires to be American, that's a bit of a joke, but because I think Hammond's the most likely to be offered an American TV series, which would involve moving to America. Then in second place, it would probably be me, because a little part of me wants to escape to California and be a dope smoking hippie. <laughs> Don't we all? Yeah. Someone did vote for you, to be fair. Would he? On the grounds that... He just said that you would suit that lifestyle a little bit more because he likes kind of old houses and old fashion cars, so maybe he wouldn't suit America as much. Yeah, I, I mean, if I did go to America, it would probably have to be West Coast. It would have to be, you know, not, probably not, well, the Midwest would be okay, but probably not, not the South because it's too hot apart from anything else. I think it would have to be, California, it would be California. It would be the Bay Area of California. Yeah. Love that. California is beautiful. Um, I wouldn't have thought any of us would, but I think if the opportunity presented, I mean, if the opportunity presented itself, I'd say no. And I think James May would say no. But how am I? I can sort of see him hanging, him hanging out with, you know, James Corden in Los Angeles and Paddy Keelty. You know, I can see that. So he might do. With his cowboy boots? Yeah, I mean, he's sort of, he, yeah, I mean, listen, we all live American lives, don't we? We all have, you know, we work for an American TV streaming service and so on and so forth. Um, but he, he does go a little bit further with his love of American things. <laughs> Who is most likely to start and fail at a new business? Now, I know you've recently bought a pub, so hopefully it's all going well. Uh, yes, uh, that is a very good question because I'd say we're all, I think that might be all in equal first place for that one. We're all pretty crap businessmen. I was actually talking to Hammond about this this morning because, yes, I have bought half a pub, but I don't run it. I'm merely the patron, if you like. We've got a manager yeah. and staff who very much know what they're doing and they're making a great success of it, especially given the restrictions. Hammond has, has Hammond has um, sort of set up a business mending old cars, which is an utterly ridiculous idea to make a TV show about it. But I can I can tell that he's spending much more on making the show than he's going to be paid for doing it. So he's basically he's basically invented a hobby that ruins him, <laughs> and he's filming it at the same time. So it will be on the record how crappy he is as a businessman. Um, Jeremy doesn't understand business either. I mean, we own, we are the founders of a web business together and we don't we don't know how to make that run. We have to give that to other people. I, I, I'm seriously going to say we're all in first place. We're all proudly crossing the line together like four GTs at Le Mans in the 1960s. We are all winners, by which I mean we're all losers. <laughs> Who's most likely to start and fail at a new business? Oh, me. That's definitely me. Um, have you started I've, any new businesses during the lockdowns? Yeah, though? yep, yep. Classic car restoration business. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be me, definitely. Why, why you? Is there a specific example? Because I really get excited by the idea of business, and I think I'm making something work, but I'm useless at it. I don't understand how it works, so I tend to run with the idea. I think this is great, and then it all goes wrong. So it'd be me. Oh, have you? Have you been to Eva Clarkson's farm or James's pub? No, I haven't been to James's pub yet. I want to, I'm desperate to. Um, 
I've been to Clarkson's farm before he was doing TV about it. But uh, so yeah, and I've seen it. Um, I, haven't, I haven't visited James Pub yet. I want to get back. It must be possible. Who's most likely to be the least help on your farm? Uh, oh God, I can't think of either of them. Uh, it, it, farming requires a skill set. I don't think, um, or a number of skill sets. I don't think that um, James and Richard have any. I can't see either of them delivering a lamb or having the patience to understand crop illnesses or no, neither, neither. They've neither of them been and I long may it continue that way. <laughs> oh, I think it'd be lovely to visit the farm. No, it would be awful if they came. <laughs> There's one field James May keeps threatening to land his aeroplane in, so I mind it. Who is most likely to get away with murder? Um, uh, who's most likely to get away with murder? Or... Well, you wouldn't suspect me of it, would you? You see, Jeremy kind of would. James, there's something about him that someday they're going to find somebody's head in his fridge. Um, Jeremy would just go and do it on live TV. I probably wouldn't be because I'm the small one, so I'm, I'm going to say me. I'm, I haven't done a murder. No. <laughs> Who is most likely to leave you a bad TripAdvisor review? Uh, Clarkson, because he's an ass. I didn't think that was funny. But as they're barred, it's not going to happen. Why are they barred? Well, because I don't want them in my pub. Why would I want them in my pub? It's for the local. It's a local pub for local people and nice people. There's a rule that isn't actually written on the menu or on the door or anything. It's just it's just understood by me. But it's no none of them and they fall into it, so they can't come in. Hey, what's going on? I'm Kevin Hart. Hi, my name's Eric Stone Street. Hi, I'm Margo. I'm Journey. I'm James McAvoy. I'm Daniel Radcliffe. I'm Rebel Wilson. I'm Jeremy Clarkson. I'm going to be translating some Scottish tweets for It's Gone Viral. On It's Gone Viral. Ooh. On It's Gone 